Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Griffin Studio. So, I'm going to make, hopefully, something that combines two things. First of all, my need or desire to make something kind of magical, mystical, outdoorsy, interesting, kind of fantasy style piece of terrain. And also, a little tea light, which is green and really cool and really directional. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, kind of a, a weird glowing um, green magical thing. I'm thinking a waystone, like a, a magical waystone. Why not? Probably an elven magical waystone. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, so freaking bright. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> Right, so my first issue here is that these little green tea lights, although they are a perfect size because they're quite small, they're very directional. The light focuses quite brightly uh, directly above them, but not so much around the sides. We'll have to fix that later, but in the meantime we need to piece together a waystone. So I'm going to use a hot wire stick to cut out the middle of this form. Uh, and then well, hopefully this will leave a big enough cavity in the middle that we can maybe place the tea light in the bottom. It's worth mentioning by the way at this point I am wearing a face mask and the room is well ventilated. I have the windows open and uh, it's better to be safe than sorry with these things because there's a lot of fumes coming off this uh, hot wire stick. Next up is texture. So I decided to texture this with the usual aluminium ball to give it kind of a, a nice rough stone effect. Um, I opted to do this before I stuck the two halves back together because I figured it might be easier and I didn't want to puncture the quite thin walls of the, of the form so I just wanted to brace the inside with my fingers there. However, there is a bit of a noticeable seam around this rock which is a an issue. I'm going to have to deal with that in the future. I then uh, etched on some little elven glyphs if you like with a sharpie and then I just needed to kind of uh, cut them out if you like with a with a, a hot needle. So I attached a needle to a, an old painting handle, paint, paint, sorry paintbrush handle and uh, heated the needle on a on a candle flame and kind of did like a plunge cut through the already thin walls then applied some Mod Podge and black paint while protecting the surface that I'm working on. Anybody who's unsure about uh, Mod Podge and black paint and the correct ratio uh, it doesn't really matter too much I don't think as long as you've got um, the Mod Podge to be a kind of black looking colour um, or at least mostly black, a very dark grey will be fine because once it dries the uh, the Mod Podge will kind of disappear and turn clear thus turning the whole mixture a lot darker and this gives a great surface for other glues to adhere to and paint uh, obviously because it's an undercoat as well at the same time I then stuck both sides of this of this waystone together and I used hot glue for this but I've still got this unsightly seam so I needed to fix that. I used some joint filler where I just mixed in some black acrylic paint and sort of tried to work it into that into that little gap all the way around. Uh, I ended up uh, using my fingers for a lot of this because it just seems a little bit easier although a lot messier. And while that was drying, I cut out some parchment paper. I needed to make a 
diffuser for this light. I wanted to really make it glow rather than kind of project uh, a light. This is my attempt at being dexterous and as you can see I am struggling. So yes, behold the finger agility. The idea is to try and st <laughs> create a, a diffuser around the the light, but obviously sellotape doesn't really uh, stick to parchment paper too well. But I think I did kind of okay, because the result is this. That should do pretty well on the inside of that waste on. Now, I also had some old coasters in my house that were kind of tired looking, a bit faded, and I was going to throw them away. And I figured I could make little bases out of them. So I kind of rounded them off. And uh, yeah, they're just made of MDF, so they're, they're really useful. And then I marked out the bottom and I drilled that out and I stuck the waste stone down to the base. And then I added some PVA to the base. And I just spread it out across the whole thing so that I could add some basing sand for texture. And when the base had dried, I gave it a spray with black primer, and then I proceeded to dry brush the the waste on. And I did this with a kind of a medium grey, pretty heavy dry brush, just to pick out all that surface texture on the stonework. I then used a light brown, I think it's a Vallejo or Valle Vallejo, Vallejo, I don't know, I don't do Spanish, um, but yeah, Vallejo or, Valle or Vallejo brown earth uh, across the whole base. And then I found this stuff in my garden. This is just some roots from a, a plant that I was digging out. And I thought this would be really useful as vines. So I added one to the base and I wanted it to kind of wrap around the waste on. So that was just a matter of gluing it in place, which took a little bit of doing, to be fair. It was quite uh, finicky work, um, just to add tiny amounts of super glue to the stonework so that the vines would stick. And right, with that vine stuck in place, I wanted to add some black wash, uh, which I actually watered down in a cup here. Uh, I didn't want the the colour to be too strong, so I just wanted to water it down, make it a bit more subtle, so I didn't darken the stone too much. And with that dry, I wanted to add a bit of PVA to the vine, a little bit just here and there, little dabs, little little spots all over the vine. I wanted to add a little bit of foliage, uh, which I'm just using a bit of club foliage from Woodland Scenics. And just very carefully, I started kind of just sprinkling this on, but it doesn't really work too well. So I ended up placing it uh, individually and this actually looked a lot better and it did take quite a while to do and it's quite fiddly with fat fingers so be warned. And with the vine done, I want to add some bigger pieces of clump foliage uh, to the base, just to act as kind of uh, bushes and things and general dense foliage. So I added some 
in small clumps to the base using PVA glue. Alright, so now I'm going to make some moss up for this stone. So I used some Woodland Scenics Fine Turf and combined that with some PVA glue to make a nice paste. And then I just kind of scraped it up the side of the waste stone on areas that I wasn't particularly happy with, like that seam that I just couldn't get rid of. And this is sort of cheating a little bit, but you know what, it looks good anyway, and I wanted kind of an overgrown look, so moss is always good for that. Alright, now I want to add a little bit of grass as well, so I just took a bit of this model long grass and put a bit of glue on the end, drilled the hole in the base, and slotted it in. Now I wanted to put some mushrooms on, so I thought I might need to make them by hand since I couldn't find any lying around anywhere. So I'm using a bit of wooden dowel, uh, that's about four or five mil across. Uh, using a few cocktail sticks, a junior hacksaw, and a dremel with a sanding tool. So basically just cut off very short lengths of, of the wooden dowel using the hacksaw. And this is, these are going to be the, uh, the the cap of the mushroom, if you like. Next I wanted to carefully drill a hole in these pieces that I cut away. Uh, if you are going to do this, do use some pliers of some description to hold the very small parts in place. Don't want to hurt your fingers with the Dremel, because those are quite unforgiving. And then I took the cocktail sticks and the small sections of dowel and I just glue them together with a bit of wood glue and let them dry. And now when you've got them at this point it's a good idea to sand them down so basically just kind of grind away the excess wood so that it sort of forms a kind of cone shape and then you can gradually make this thing look a little bit more mushroomish and this is a lot easier to do than than you'd think actually especially once you've done like two or three of them it just becomes really easy and quite therapeutic actually And because you're doing this by hand uh, with a Dremel, it means that you can make all your mushrooms different sizes and shapes, and uh, you can kind of create very unique designs. Then just clip them off with a pair of pliers, and you get a little mushrooms. Really simple. I'm going to go with a classic red kind of death cap style mushroom. So they're all getting a good red base coat on the top and then added a few white spots. Very traditional looking kinds of mushrooms. Just put a dab of super glue on the bottoms 
and stuff them down to the base. And then I added some self-adhesive wildflower clumps, just a white and a yellow. And I wanted to fill in all this uh, kind of dirt with a, a lot of lush grass. The idea was to make this thing as green as possible and make it look like everything just grows naturally really well around this stone. So I just covered the entire base with PVA and then added a very lush, very green verdant uh, static grass. It's really cool. I like. Oh, hang on, hang on. Let's have a bit of a uh, lights. <laughs> Such a big kid. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yes. I. The idea behind this was that um, it would be kind of a lush, overgrown waste stone uh, that would be kind of magical in nature, probably life giving magic. So I wanted it to do kind of like a, a really overgrown, lush, foresty like um, base to go for it to go on. And I've got everything on there, bushes, grass, plants, flowers, uh, mushrooms, vines, the lot. So yeah, I think I, I put that off pretty well and I think it looks pretty good. It'll probably go on most, um, cool fantasy style game boards, you know, um, particularly good for, I think, things like uh, like Age of Sigma and, um, you know, other kind of outdoor battle scene type games. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's it for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, if you found it useful or entertaining, then please let me know in the comments below and feel free to like and subscribe as well. Uh, if there's anything that you want me to tackle in the future, then just let me know and I'll try and give it a go. Why not? Usually I tend to make things that are uh, kind of taking up space in my in my studio here. Like I tend to make things that out of materials that I've got too much of, uh, which is the whole point of using the, the little tea light, the little green tea light there. So, so yeah, that's normally the idea behind me making stuff, but if there's something that you particularly want me to tackle, then let me know in the comments below and I will try and get back to you. Uh, that's it for now though, so I will just see you again next time. Thanks for stopping by and happy crafting. Oh, and really quickly, while I was making that, I also made a non-glowing, kind of wintery based uh, waist on in a similar fashion. Less foliage, more snow. So if I also I recorded this, uh, if you want to know how I made this or the snow like terrain, let me know and I will um, I'll, I'll try and post this one too. I didn't want to post two videos for waystones so close together. It might be weird, pointless. Let me know and I will get back to you. Thanks again. See you later. Happy crafting. <laughs>